Hey guys, welcome back to the Rocket H Wood Shop. Glad you're with me because I'm going to show you a brand new tool that I just got in the shop. I've got a very first CNC project and a custom dovetail spline cherry frame to go along with it. Stay tuned, you don't want to miss it. Boom! Jig, maker of the gripper. Work safer, work smarter. Well, I just happen to have a good friend in the tool industry. In collaboration with another company, they have agreed to send me and one other YouTube blogger a CNC machine. But not just any CNC machine. Not like any that you have seen on YouTube yet. This is the CNC Piranha from Next Wave Automation, available from Rockler. That's right, I said Rockler. <laughs> but the cool thing about this CNC machine is that it's not in pieces. The company actually put it together for me, tested it, and then has sent it to me so I can try it out and start using it on projects. It's about 90% done. There's just a little bit more that I gotta do, and I'm gonna show you how to do it. Now ain't this thing pretty slick? For us garage people, this kind of CNC machine is built to suit. It is a small footprint CNC for us garage type people. You don't need something huge to make beautiful projects. Perfect for small or even medium sized projects that you want to incorporate uh, carvings of any kind, uh, not just in wood, but you can do acrylics uh, and even soft metals and you can also digitize existing carvings with special attachments. So, let's tear it open like Christmas. Now the CNC also came with this box full of extra items that I'm going to need. Okay, now I'm just doing a little bit of minor hookups here. I've got the control module with the serial port connector uh, to the bottom of it, and it's running to the uh, power control module here. And then I've got the AC adapter cord also plugged in to its location. And it looks like the Z axis motor has a set of cables as well as the X axis motor here on the side and it's going to be plugged into the back of the control module as well. Now one thing that I'm gonna do before I start downloading anything is I'm gonna install the router, which is a Bosch Colt. Okay, now that all the connections and the router is in place, we're gonna go over here to the computer, according to the manual, and make sure that there are no firmware upgrades for that particular CNC. Just go to nextwaveautomation.com, click on the download link at the top of the screen, look for your CNC, and see if there are any firmware updates for it. I've got the carving design laid out on the piece of software that came with the CNC, which I'll go over in another video. I'm gonna cut my piece of wood that I'm gonna put that carving on. Now here's my 11 and 3 8 square piece. Now my original measurement for my carving is 10 by 10. What I've done is I've made an X from corner to corner, and I have taken the inch and 3 8 inch measurement and halved it, measured from one side and the other, and made a crosshair that extends through the X line. That'll be my starting point for my machine. You can also make your starting point in the center to simplify things. Now I'm just gonna use the control panel to set my CNC where it needs to be. So I'm gonna bring it towards me, move it over. Now I'm just taking a scrap sheet of paper I'm gonna just jog this down until it touches the paper. It feels like it's right inside the paper there. Now, using the controller, we're just gonna zero everything out because that's where we're gonna start from. It says I'm about to change, that's what I wanna do. Now I have my USB drive plugged into the console which has my saved program. The USB is lit, so we're gonna access it. Access the uh, file you want, and hit run. Oh, 
Okay, all that took roughly about 10 minutes and it looks really, really cool. I just gotta do a little final sanding, but there's something else that I'm gonna do with this. I'm not just showing you a CNC machine. This is gonna be a project as well. All right, now I'm gonna do some creative painting. I've masked off the areas of the uh, carving that I don't want painted a certain color. And then I'll just remove, replace, until I have it all painted, and then I'll sand the top, which will leave the carving painted. It's gonna be cool. Now because this is still pretty thick on the back, I'm gonna run it through my raised panel bit again and take off quite a bit, leaving a raised panel on the back and on the front but leaving a small lip that I can put inside of a frame. Now using my jointer fence setup, I'm gonna take some of this rough sawn cherry that I've got and square up the edges. You wanna make this jig, because it works well, I highly recommend doing it. You'll find it in my archives. Now we're just gonna cut these three inches wide. All right, now that all the edges are square, I'm just gonna take this cove bit, little by little, until I get the depth I want on the inside of the frame. I went ahead and did it on both sides since it's gonna be a raised panel on the inside as well. Now with my dado stack in set to roughly the width of the tongue of the plaque, I'm gonna run my edges through where I made the cove. Okay, I ran into a little snag. The three inch uh, wide piece that I had causes a problem. I was only limited by these four pieces that I had and if I had that three inch wide piece and cut it from the corner it would have actually made these two short. So I cut them down to an inch and a half wide and they're perfect. Okay, now that we've got all the sanding done and everything is kind of flush where I want it to be, I'm gonna add a little decorative touch and reinforce these miters by using my dovetail key and spline cutting jig. Now, if you wanna know how to make one of these yourself, check out my archives or the link down in the description below will take you straight to it. Now, in order to keep this thing secure so it doesn't walk when it goes through the bit, uh, which I've had happen before, I put some hand screw clamps on either side on both sides. Uh, that way it'll lock it in place at 90 degrees and lock it in place 90 degrees to the jig. Now I've gone ahead and cut a piece of the same material that I use for the plaque itself and then I cut it in half on the table saw. Now I'm gonna stand it up on its edge with the grain running in the direction I am moving it and I'm gonna nip away with the same dovetail bit that I used to make those slots. Well, this project was pretty fun. I enjoyed actually uh, doing the CNC work because I've never had one before, never even attempted one before. And uh, thanks to Next Wave Automation and Rockler for sending me the uh, CNC machine, I got my first hand at trying it out. Now, for those of you that are wondering why I didn't just run the uh, plaque through the planer to take off the paint, since this was a very shallow carving, I didn't want to take a risk on taking out some of that carving and screwing it up. So sanding was my only option, and I almost screwed it up a little bit in places around the star because that was really shallow. Uh, so in case you're wondering why I didn't do it, that's why. I had a really good time making this. The dovetail splines are gonna keep this frame from coming apart, even with all the humidity that I have in this shop. So this sucker's gonna last a long time. I'm really pleased with how it came out. For all of the information on the jigs that I use in this video, as well as the techniques that I hope you enjoyed, you can find those in the description or just hunt through my archives and you'll find them there too. So guys, thanks very much. I will talk to you next time. For anybody that's going to WIA, please stop me and say hi. I might have a sticker or a magnet for you. Take care, see you then. Boom!